Today we're going to be looking at another one of Electroboom's videos, specifically graphite and its awesome properties, like slowing down neutrons so they can cause fission reactions in a nuclear power plant. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. Hi. Graphite. I like graphite. It's a specific arrangement of carbon atoms that is highly conductive, which also allows us to draw. Graphite has many applications, from yeah, pencils, pencils to DC motor brushes to some traces on electronics to battery carbon rods and more. This is a replacement lead of a mechanical pencil. Yep. It's not made of lead, of course, it's carbon. The reason they call it lead is the result of the same ignorance that resulted in calling the North American natives Indian. You know, those early explorers, when they found America, they thought they were... I never heard someone make that comparison, but yes. <laughs> and they used mechanical pencil lead too back then, I'm sure. <laughs> in India, so they called them Indian. Later, British tried to fix it by eliminating natives, which they failed. So Wow. <laughs> Didn't expect them to go there in, a, in an Electroboom video. That's, uh, hmm. Hmm, I wasn't expecting that. They took over India and tried to turn them into British, which they failed. Now they have to call the real <laughs> Indians, East Indian, South Asian, what? Asian Indian, or whatever, to avoid mixing them with natives who were wrongfully accused of being Indian. I wasn't even involved. The point is that people were originally using lead to draw. So when yes. they discovered graphite, they thought it does the same thing, so it must also be an Indian. One in that's, that's crazy. I mean, I get what he's, what he's saying about, like, just words changing over time. Like, when's the last time you saw a blackboard that was actually black? When's the last time you saw blueprints that were actually blue? Important note, the element of lead is highly poisonous and I hate it. It turns you into an idiot before it kills you. But I like graphite. If you want to hear more about that sort of subject, I'll pin a comment down below that talks about the extreme hazards of lead poisoning and other heavy elements can do this too but that one was particularly nefarious for how much lead and gasoline affected everyone and dropped some iq points of an entire generation before making them sick now let's pass some current through the pencil lead that way i can measure its resistance <laughs> nowadays everything <laughs> yeah that's gonna be not very much resistance there <laughs> goes up Let's try again. Here we go. Wow, it lights up well. Now I'm running one amp. I'm measuring voltage across around one centimeter. You got your fingers. He's got his fingers touching both ends of that. Both the. Oh no. So for this particular piece, the resistance is 150 milliohms across one centimeter. And I mean, yeah, at that low, you might just get not even a tingle, but. Still, this is just... I know I've seen several of you in the comments who all, were also um, electricians or control technicians or, some, or something that watching this videos is like the exact opposite of everything I was taught. And yeah, I'm, I think I'm in the same boat as that. <laughs> and this is how they make potentiometers. Let's try 30 volt 10 amp. Sparky, sparky. That was a funny noise for that. Just wow. melted my alligator clip. Now, let's kick it up a notch. I'm gonna run 10 amps through. Oh, here's that pencil from that other video that's showing that quickly. I couldn't quite tell what it was. Uh, thanks again for, for pointing that out to me in the comments. I appreciate it. A regular pencil's graphite. Wow, Smoke. this is getting... Oh my god! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, oh yeah, go ahead and complete that oh, circuit. Shit. We'll see the graphite. That is insane. Did you know that graphite, though, was a contributing cause for the Chernobyl nuclear accident? So graphite is a neutron moderator. And what that means is it is a thing that slows down neutrons so they can interact with uranium-235 and cause fission. Because slower neutrons are more likely to cause fissions than fast neutrons. Now, water is an effective moderator, and it is what's used as a moderator in most nuclear power plants that are operating to this very day. But this reactor, this RBMK reactor, and the English translation of RBMK 
is high power channel type reactor. Even though this is kind of getting back to what Electroboom was talking about earlier, it actually uses uranium of a lower enrichment and its power output is often smaller. So again, kind of a, a bit of a fun uh, naming convention right there. But it uses natural uranium, which is a very low concentration of uranium-235, less than 1%, compared to a pressurized water reactor that's on the order of 3 to 5%. It varies a little bit on each individual assembly, because you want to arrange them in a certain way to optimize you know, how much power is being produced in what part of the core. A bit like playing a game of Scrabble. But... Graphite moderates more than water, so they needed graphite in order to use natural uranium. And the reason why they did that is it's cheaper. No need to enrich uranium, and graphite was readily available during the, especially during the rapid industrial growth period in the Soviet Union, where they just used a lot more graphite. So building these reactors were a lot less expensive. Now this, in and of itself, is does have some safety risks it has this design contributes to a positive co void coefficient which means if you increase the voids increase the steam gaps reactor power goes up and that makes it more vulnerable especially at low power now that by itself isn't dangerous enough to cause an accident because um, you can still shut down assuming you don't defeat your safety systems you can still safely uh, shut down the reactor. A graphite moderator, uh, these graphite, these little orange channels as you see on this uh, picture, that by itself isn't dangerous. This is the design to graphite tip your control rods. Control rod is inserted, it actually pushes some graphite down first, which is gonna raise reactor power at the bottom of the core. You can see why this is dangerous. And again, it was just a cost savings method. It's like, hey, we can put this graphite here and it'll give us a more uniform power distribution at a fraction of the cost towards the bottom, which is true when you're sitting at 100% power. But when you do an emergency reactor shutdown where you, f where you fully insert all control rods, in a few seconds, pushing this graphite is gonna raise reactor power. This is the equivalent of when you slam on the brakes, your car actually accelerates for a couple of seconds. And there is your contributing cause to the accident. Note that this is just one of many causes that made the Chernobyl accident so bad. It gets super hot and burns the wood around it, but it doesn't doing? burn. That's why it's good for high temperature applications. Let's run 10 amps through the graphite and see how much it glows. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Why? <laughs> why? Just, just why? <laughs> Let me see if I can measure its temperature using my thermal camera. Oh wow. wow! Look at that! Right away, it goes above the 330 degrees maximum. Of <laughs> By the way, I 330 uh, Celsius. Now we're getting into reactor coolant temperatures ranges for a pressurized water reactor. Note that graphite. Note that in an RBMK or other graphite tipped reactor design, the maximum allowable temperature is on the order of 750 degrees Celsius. I have four of these thermal cameras to give away at the end of my video. So these get very hot. Always wear safety gloves to protect your fingers and don't try this at home. Look, Let me see if I can make some gloves. marks. <laughs> Always wear safety goggles when wow. dealing with very bright arcs. Let's try it again. <laughs> it's the same reason why you wear those things while you're doing welding. Nice, look at that. Now that's cool. <laughs> oh, is it, the gloves nice. are catching fire. Am I on fire? Yep, yep you're on fire. <laughs> I suppose using the gardening gloves is not the best it's idea. Garden. You can get carbon rod from a carbon zinc battery. There's a whole, um, at least from what I'm used to, there's a whole data table where you look at voltage, you look at current, it does an arc rating calculation, and it tells you what type of gloves you need to wear for each individual job depending on the depending on the arc risk or the shock risk if you're working with energized stuff directly. Safest option is always to question if you even need to do the work. 
energized. Not an alkaline battery, its structure is different. Make sure it says carbon zinc or heavy duty and it doesn't say alkaline or rechargeable. First you pull the cover off. Okay. Then you gently pull the battery rod gently. out while turning it like this. Okay. So it's... Now I have double A battery rods, D size battery rods, and some longer rods from my old 6 volt battery pack. And I have my super capacitor battery. I doubled the number of capacitors so I can charge them to 30 volts that can deliver uh, more than 200 amps. I'm getting a. I know this is tiny, tiny, tiny little 12 pack, but. I'm getting uh, flashbacks to Styropyro's crazy 100 car battery video. Oops. Let's make some arcs now. There we go. More graphite. <laughs> hey, my rods are burning. <laughs> Did you not see in those goggles? Rods, apparently. It seems like there is some flux in them that eventually burns out. Let's see if we can melt some copper with this. Wow, that is bright. Basically welding with that, graphite. People. Yeah, Molten. over a thousand. Oh sh This glove is not- And now you know why I grab um, the RBMK reactor, um, or the, not the reactor, the moderator temperature, or the graphite temperature has limited around 700. Good for this purpose. <laughs> uh, thank you for recommending this electro boom video to me. Never thought of tearing apart batteries like that and just putting two graphite sticks together, but hey, um, if anyone's going to think of that, it's going to be Electro Boom. I always enjoy his videos and always his public safe, uh, service announcements on um, showing the consequences of not using proper PPE. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.